Melanie is a creative strategist who facilitates progress for, for leaders interested in moving beyond business as usual. She brings nearly 30 years of experience working with organizations across sector, size, and lifespan. She founded Timpano Group in 2003 to leverage a unique blend of talents that advance sustainable transformation in aligning strategy, systems, people, and process. Sounds pretty awesome. Melanie, take it away. Great, thank you, Ben. Um, thank you everyone for the opportunity to come and be with you this evening and share some thoughts and perspectives about opportunities that are ahead for all of you and all of us and all of our communities as we think about that brighter future, as um, you know, Bill mentioned, that need to adapt and pivot to this changing landscape. And I would also encourage you to continue throughout the evening to take good notes and to definitely ask those questions. Um, this is uh, the opportunity um, what we have to come together as a, a learning community um, for on behalf of your Rotary Clubs and that have such influence in the neighborhoods and communities. Um, with which you are a part. So excited to hear that. Um, also was really um, intrigued, Ben, by your, your opening. You said it was taking the facilitators easy way out. And I would in fact suggest that what you did was the perfect framing for uh, what we need to think about when we talk about diversifying our networks and expanding our, our impact. That just by thinking about the, the words that we use and what does that mean? And the fact that you call out, you know, what's the definition of vibrant? I would imagine that there were those in the, in the room here this evening that in fact did not think about it in the way that you put out there. And so having that shared language is something that is so important when we think about expanding our minds and the, our networks and our opportunities. Um, and also how much you spoke to the need to understand there's a certain way we might think about the concept of vibrant and vibrancy. And then there's a way that we might feel about that. And really understanding that when we're coming into these spaces together, we have some folks who are thinking a lot and some folks who are feeling even more. And it's that collection and that combination that really does move us all forward, um, certainly as individuals and groups, but also as, as teams and as clubs in our community. I'm going to uh, ask if there's an opportunity to uh, share my screen so that there can be some uh, visuals that will be moving ahead. And while that technology is underway, um, I would just ask all of you when you think about um, to open up your chat feature if you're able to do that as well and think about typing away or hold it in your mind. Um, I'm gonna do a little word or phrase association with all of you and to think about, you know, when you think about Rotary, when you think about your Rotary Club, what is the first word or phrase that comes to mind with what I'm about to say? And so get ready to type away. So the first word or phrase that comes to mind when you think about Rotary and your Rotary Club the future. When I say the future, you think what? Type that away in there. And what we see coming in is uh, a lot of, a lot of, I love it, you're all active in the chat. This is going to be even better. Um, and so within that, thinking about, uh, you know, the unknown, the this other components. No, we're hoping that I can pull up the chat at the same time. And so with that, um, I am not going to be able to do both at the same time. So one moment, please. Here we go. Challenging the future is now. The future is exciting. Strength and survival changes. Um, see also, you know, a bit in terms of that balance between future is bright and the future could be scary. Um, also, definitely the future being virtual, love young members, um, seeing that come through, a live service. Again, what you'll see here is a good you know, diversity of thought and thinking and experience, small and mighty possibilities. Really important when we think about um, what the future holds for us and how we can come together, that future is going to look different. And so how can we share your experiences and in the breakouts um, that are coming up later this evening, hope that you'll have that opportunity to, to take this energy, to take some of these concerns, some of the identified opportunity and really focus on how you can bring those collective experiences back into your club. 
and we have a, a lot of ground to cover in a limited time. Um, so another thing I'd like to hear about in the chat uh, is what do you want to get out of our next 20 minutes? For I have a lot of information that I will go through, um, but also use that chat as the opportunity to ask questions that you might have, things that you would like to see addressed and do that um, as we go along the course of our conversation. Um, and also to provide feedback to one another if there's something that uh, sparks an idea for you. Again, use that chat and the opportunity to, to share that information. Um, one of the things that we've heard a lot about since March um, and the onset of the, the pandemic and then the subsequent response through which we're all navigating is really trying to figure out for a lot of organizations how to stay relevant and how to be able to have those connections in a space that is so much now virtual and we can't come together and do things in the way that we had been doing them. And the interesting thing that I've found in, in working with a lot of organizations um, in preparing for the pandemic response and in helping them navigate that, it really comes back to the remembering that the COVID and the pandemic has really been an accelerant and a spotlight to issues that organizations have been having prior to March. And so this creates this space for us to really think differently and to try things and to experiment in ways that we may have been hesitant to do pre-pandemic. That we might have been thinking about how are we going to get those younger members? How are we going to diversify our membership? How can we have a greater impact in our community? And to rethink about how the pandemic and the response resulting gives us a new way to experiment and to try new things and to, to reach out to people in ways that perhaps we hadn't before. Um, and I, I can speak from personal experience in pulling together a lot of panels early on in the pandemic where there were people that I really wanted to tap into their thought leadership on things and they always felt a little bit out of reach or I didn't quite have that direct connection in order to just, hey, will so-and-so warm the door for me with this person so then we can make that connection, kind of your classic networking. I found that I just, I just reached out and put it out there and said, I want to try this panel and this conversation. I'm willing to do the lifting on it if you're willing to come in and just talk with me about it. And the responses time and again were incredibly overwhelming and re overwhelmingly positive, I should say as well, that when asked, people were more than willing to step up. And I think that experience was good affirmation that there were some barriers that we might have had in place individually or for our organizations that we, we just kind of need to get over ourselves and put ourselves out there, take that risk and ask for help, ask for perspective, ask for other opinions. Um, and during this time of COVID-19, people are typically more than willing to say yes. Um, we also have other opportunities in the virtual world where, in fact, we're able to convene and come together. And how can we leverage that for our Rotary Clubs so that we're still engaging and perhaps bringing in talent or speakers from communities that might have seemed unattainable before or experimenting with different ways with the technologies um, because we can try things now. And if it doesn't work, we just say, well, we're going to try something else and see how that where that takes us in ways that we've gotten a lot more forgiveness and we're giving ourselves a lot more grace during this period. Um, so to seize that as an opportunity. And I, I also wanna share um, a few points of clarification, perhaps when we think about um, sort of my background and my roles, um, I wanna be clear that in fact, my expertise is in organizational development and sustainable transformation. So I am not an expert on diversity, equity, and inclusion. There are a number of people in that space that I have learned from um, and continue to learn from. And um, the opportunity that I bring is for us to think about these conversations from really a systems perspective. Um, and how can we think about this as expanding diversity of thought, diversity of experience, opening up our networks in ways that will allow us to move forward from an organizational or systems perspective. Um, and also to, to put forward one of the key components to my practice has always been, and we don't have to agree on everything, and we certainly don't have to agree on all points. But what we do need to be able to do is to listen and to think and to, to hear other perspectives and then ask questions and, and be open about that and be open to that new experience so that we can expand our experiences overall. 
and my dog is going to come in likely and agree with all of these points um, as he gets very excited and you just do not put a 135 pound dog into a small box and expect him to stay there. So I think uh, my partner is taking him out into the outside world in order to uh, have a quieter conversation, but we'll see what happens. Um, and so when we think about that experience and expanding that, well, it comes down also to thinking differently about how we have these conversations and the value of bringing in new voices, bringing in other perspectives is because ultimately we get better solutions. Um, we've, I'm sure we've all you know, heard and experienced the whole concept of groupthink. Um, and that definitely can come into play and have that opportunity where we think we've come to a really good solution, but in fact, it's a good solution for the people who are part of making it, not necessarily a good solution for everyone else who might be affected by it. And because we can be creatures of habit, that is something that we really need to, to break in a very intentional way. And the other opportunity that comes out is that the challenge of navigating those candid conversations and hearing other perspectives in a way that really strengthens relationships as well. And when we think about Rotary and the, the benefit and the value of what the clubs do, what that experience is for people, it is about strengthening those relationships and having that enhanced impact that comes when we think beyond ourselves and beyond the circle that we know. Um, because the, the other thing is, this isn't easy, like expanding our networks, getting out of our comfort zones, um, finding new ways to contribute in a community, that's hard stuff to do. And part of that is because we are naturally drawn to likeness as human beings. And so we are typically drawn to those who, whether they look like us, sound like us, talk like us, or feel like they might have a similar experience, that tends to be where we gravitate because it's easy, it's comfortable, and it's known. And we have to, as individuals, really kind of fight that bias um, and work through it in a way that allows us to, to move forward and to move beyond some of those societal affirmations about traits and shared values and work on that is a more inclusive uh, opportunity where, again, we are sharing our experiences by diversifying those with whom we're talking about our experiences. And so a key component comes down to what are you willing to do? This is active work. This is intentional work when we think about diversifying those networks. And so as a club, and as a leadership, as leaders in your clubs, it is really important to think about how far are we willing to go in this and what are we willing to commit in terms of resources, efforts, and, and tolerance of risk. Um, putting yourself out there and asking someone um, who you don't know or asking someone from a different background or coming in with a different perspective, you know, there's risk involved with that. And so being clear about what you are willing to do as a club and what's, what are the resources that you're willing to carve out for that in terms of time. Um, and when you think about that, a few guiding questions that I'll, I'll offer up in that if, if everyone is welcome in Rotary, which is the message that I have known over the years and certainly have heard and continue to read about um, with Rotary, you know, how does your Rotary membership really reflect the community? And, and being clear about that and, and open and um, honest about that in terms of not just race, race and ethnicity, but backgrounds, age, um, the type of industries that are represented, in doing that sort of cataloging and audit or inventory is that helpful first step. If we look at our community, how do we reflect that? And how do we know what someone truly experiences in Rotary? Have we taken that opportunity to step back and ask people about it? Do we do an electronic survey about their experience in Rotary that might be looking back and also looking ahead to what has your experience been? How would you describe it? What are the words or phrases that you might use to describe that experience? And then looking ahead, what do we want someone to experience when they have an interaction with our Rotary Club? And then how similar are those content, doing that content analysis for how similar are those two lists of words? Are they the same? Are they different? Where are areas where we can um, provide that opportunity? It can also be um, doing a quick check back with people who have been 
part of your club and even in virtual times, inviting them into just an informal coffee to talk about their experiences um, and gaining that perspective. Again, things that we think may be more challenging to do in virtual times and in fact might even be easier to do. Another key question to think about is how do you really celebrate differences and attend to dissent? And so if you have those programs or those conversations within your clubs, what are you doing to celebrate the differences that people are bringing in, the different perspectives, the different um, opportunities and topics? And then how are you attending to dissent when you bring in potentially speakers that are sparking different thoughts or asking provocative questions and facilitate those conversations moving forward or moderating them? And again, some of this is putting systems and practices in place. Others is being just aware and being very mindful of how you are moving forward as a club. And then of course, also asking, how does the community see and believe your commitment that everyone is welcome? If you were to pop into the, the library and ask the librarian, or if you were to ask your, your colleagues that might not be one degree removed, but perhaps two degrees removed, what would they say in terms of the impact? Could they articulate that? And are there things that you can do in your community that can help elevate um, that presence and that impact? Is there the opportunity to, to think differently about how you might be engaging with your, your weekly newspaper, your daily newspaper, some of your media outlets there, um, ways to be providing information that Rotary Club members can be saying in terms of the, the messaging of welcoming and being really welcoming with that experience. So again, aligning, what does it mean to us to be welcome? What does it mean to be welcoming? And then doing that assessment for how is someone gonna know that that's happening and how, how will they believe us? Um, so really important to think about what you're willing to do starts with just asking some questions for reflection. And so starting with the leadership team and then perhaps moving this into a conversation with the club itself and how is that finding its way out through the various committees and work groups or task forces that you might have in place. And then when you have that set of information, lean in and take an even closer look at your practices and how you are building that network and, and diversifying your experiences. And so dig a little bit more deeply, go back and do an audit of the programs that your club has put on over the past six months, year, two years even, and really intentionally look at how is that actually reflecting and respecting diversity. And by that diversity, look at that as diversity of thought, of the topics that are presented, how they were presented, um, the content nature of them. Also to look at that from the context of the presenters. Uh, did we, did we pull, if we lined them all up, would they all look the same? Um, would they have the same sort of demographic characteristics? Um, did they have the same sort of presentation styles? Um, but really doing that assessment of the programs in terms of the speakers that you're bringing in, and also to be looking at the programs uh, that you're doing in the communities, the actual work um, that is done by so many Rotary Clubs in so many communities, certainly around Wisconsin, but also around the globe. Um, and how is that respecting the diversity in terms of the impact that you want to have? And if you think about that from an inclusionary perspective, you know, how inclusive or how inclusionary are your traditions and actions? Um, this is one of the things that's come up a lot um, with service clubs and going back and thinking about, there are a lot of wonderful traditions that bind service club members together by the very nature of them, and yet can be a little scary or uncertain for someone who's coming in to, for the first time or doesn't know or even a speaker who might be in that space. Um, and so are there ways that you can reach out to them in advance so that they're prepared for what some of those traditions or the typical flow of your meeting might be um, with an invitation for them to be included in that. Um, and so doing a little bit of that prep work up front and then reinforcing it when you're actually in the room, either virtually or physically, um, so that there is that inclusion um, aspect and that welcoming feeling. And then another key thing when you're digging deeper and leaning in, um, think about that 
you know, club access and who's defining what it means to have an, an accessible rotary club and who gets in the door and what is the process for that? Um, you know, who really is defining that and by what standards that move beyond just what's on paper or what's in the procedures and in the governance processes, um, but within your specific community, how aligned is the intent of that message and how you'd like to be practicing with the impression that may exist in your community and working to then close any gaps and to definitely celebrate alignment when you see that. Um, and so that's a way to think about what you're willing to do, ensuring that everyone is welcome in Rotary, then leaning in to dig a little bit deeper and then thinking about that vision of achievement. How will you know when you've, expanded your network, when you've diversified, when you've made things more inclusive. And a few key things that you can point to um, is looking at that cognitive and demographic diversity. Again, if you've thought as a club in terms of what you want to represent and reflect in the community and how you can have that diversity of perspective and conversation and impact, do that inventory and do that logging for the cognitive diversity of how people think about things going back even to the, the opening and thinking about vibrant. And is that something that you visually saw right away as that magenta color and a lot of energy? Or was that that written word of the energy and enthusiasm and moving that forward for your experiences? And then definitely attending to that demographic diversity as well. Socioeconomics, racial and ethnic diversity, and really ensuring that you have that robust enrichness. Um, and one of the key ways to do that is to go back and look at, often I've seen with Rotary Clubs, it is that, you know, get everyone in the room and take the picture. Here it might be, get everyone up on the Hollywood squares of Zoom and do a screen capture and then step back and think, how, how does that look? Because how that looks is how the community may also be seeing and interpreting you. And then you need to think about that intentional and authentic inclusion. Um, this is an area where it gets also challenging for folks who, who really intend to mean well and want to have that diversity of conversation and diversity of representation, um, but they are going about it perhaps in less than intentional or less than authentic ways. And so what is the commitment that the club is making and how are you sort of keeping it real with everyone in terms of being inclusive and having those conversations um, and moving it a step beyond just perhaps bringing in a speaker to talk about diversity or having a, a speaker come in from a community of color and then that's moving on from that without leaning in, digging a little deeper, having follow-up conversations with those speakers um, or people who are in the audiences to, to talk about how that can become part of the Rotary experience. Um, also a great way to think about it is inviting someone in to speak who may not have been someone you would have normally reached out to to become part of your club membership or your club activities, following up with, with, with them and inviting them to do something else with the club or asking for their feedback. Again, kind of using some of those networking skills and techniques um, that allow you to move in in a very intentional fashion. And then, you know, consider everything through another perspective. Um, and so if you come up with your, your programming list for the, for the year or the upcoming quarter, here are who all the speakers are going to be, or here's how we're going to have our programmatic impact out in the community, put that down on paper, make sure that someone can see it kind of physically or mentally step back from that and think, if I'm a currently 65 year old person and I've put this together, what do I think someone who's 20, how would they react to this? Or if there's a, looking at it from as a you know, working professional in a certain sector, if I were to think about this from a different sector, how would someone respond to that? Do I have enough diversity of thought in here? Have I presented it in a manner that actually speaks to them and attracts them and persuades them as opposed to it just being something that I think is really cool? Because um, I can tell you I've come up with a ton of things that I think are amazing that then when I stepped back to go, ooh, but my target audience on this is actually someone who is not at all like me, I've had to completely rethink it. Um, 
And it's also just a good exercise for us to go through in terms of keeping our brains moving and thinking differently about the changing world around us. Um, so that can be one way to also put that persona together of um, some people have done it this way where you think about taking some techniques from the branding and advertising world of creating this persona of the, the future Rotary member and someone that you would like to have in. And it might be you come up with four different types of folks. They're your imaginary friends and they are the lenses through which you run your materials or um, think about your experience. Um, can be a, a great way to kind of bring yourself out of your own head. And I wanted to leave a bit of time um, for all of you. So I'm going to stop the share and go back to the chat um, and see if there are some components in there of things that you had typed in that you were looking to take out of the conversation today. And I know that there is um, always that desire for some you know, examples. Hopefully there have been a few in there. Um, one, again, being when you think about those um, programming opportunities, how are you expanding the network, going beyond those typical go-tos, um, and perhaps reaching a bit for the stars of folks you might want to bring in, um, and making that ask and seeing if they're going to say yes. Um, and in doing that, it can also be useful to ensure that you do have that, that quick synopsis of your club at the ready so that they can have a sense for here are the last five topics that were discussed in the club or here is the overview of our service uh, categories and how we reach out into the community so that they're more inclined to say yes when they know a little bit more about what they're stepping into. Um, and to provide some context around why you're interested in having them come in to talk about that particular topic and what you might be asking of them to help lead you forward in your club's uh, network expansion and what that can look like. Um, so that's one way if you think about your service opportunities, how is it that perhaps it's reaching in and reaching beyond what might have been the, the ones that you've had those great relationships with. Um, and seeing if we are currently working with this array of organizations or individuals through our service opportunities, is there something that we're missing when we hear about the needs in our community? And is there a, a different way we can get some exposure uh, in for that as well? And so again, also encourage for those who are um, in, the, in the conversation here today to take that opportunity and um, I think you can raise your hand through the process as well or unmute um, and see if there are some specific questions or scenarios that would be useful for further conversation. We do have about five minutes for Melanie. So uh, as she said, if you have a, a, uh, anything to get the conversation going question, um, feel free to chat it or raise your hand and we'll, we'll get it to Melanie or things you would take issue with. I'm always good for that too. Because that's, that's the opportunity to really expand that network and how we think about things. I, I can feel the typing happening. There we go, I knew. I can it. see it. I think that there is this question and I'll also, um, I would say that what I would encourage you to also put in the in the chat while while I'm talking and while you're thinking about it, and this might be something that can help you bridge as well into the breakouts that are coming when you think about that ability to adapt and membership engagement and public image and the foundation impact is what's what's concerning you like what is keeping you up at night when you think about the future of your Rotary Club. Um, and to put that in the chat and while you're having that opportunity to to reflect and perhaps get a little uncomfortable about naming that um, since it would become a you know public to the group um, you might also find that there are things in there where you have more similarities about the things that you're concerned about um, so I encourage you to, to share that and one of the struggles is, is that has come up and, and thank you Rebecca for bringing this forward is how to do more than just survive when we can't meet in person or do regular events. And I think one of the key ways to think about moving beyond just that survival is to, to really find access to individuals who may or may not be in your club, who really are savvy about some of the technology that's out there. 
And so being able to think about, there are a lot of ways you can have informal conversations um, that might be not your typical rotary experience, but it might be, we want to still have a wine tasting, or we want to have a coffee chat or a book club, and we're actually going to do that through Zoom. And it is possible. It's not quite the same because um, there's a little bit more of that linear sequence and you can't all be tasting the same wine necessarily um, or the same juice beverage or mocktail or whatever it might be, but you can still have a conversation about it and you can still bring that in and use it as a different kind of starting point for keeping those connections alive. Another way to, to look at it is to see what opportunities you might have as a club in order to connect with other clubs or other organizations that in fact are also struggling with that same question or the same need to connect. It might be that you reach out to some of the, the individuals that you've supported through your foundations or others and ask them if there are ways that you could be involved in things that they're doing. And so it might be just reaching out to them and asking to be a participant or to have a shared conversation or a shared event um, with them that's a little more informal in nature. Um, and so it, it's challenging to think about. And a lot of it is thinking about how are you staying connected with your friends? How are you staying connected with your family during these times and translating and transferring some of that to your rotary experience? Um, and also thinking about, you know, there are the challenges about fundraising during a pandemic and that we're seeing that um, over and over in a variety of ways. And the, the opportunity is the same as it has been in terms of fundraising. It's all about relevance and it's all about timing and it's about relationships. And so bringing together those three components to think about how is the club advancing the community and advancing that impact? How has it done it? And it is often that right now it's all about added value and being able to go in and, and offer things um, that you might see the reward for down the road um, and planting that seed. Um, question in terms of what goes into defining that ideal new Rotarian um, and, and thinking about that, when you think about the idea, one of the techniques that I'll, I'll often do with people, and you can still do this via Zoom, it's not quite as much fun to do it virtually, but have everyone, send everyone in advance of a meeting, uh, you know, sort of a, a stick figure or a, an open-ended person form, and then ask everyone in the room to draw the picture of the future Rotarian. And, they, and literally draw it. It goes back to my kindergarten art skills of kind of putting clothes on and kind of figuring out what does that look like and then have them share that. And so everyone holds up their drawing to the camera and they talk about why they put those particular clothes on that particular figure and what that means to them. And that can be an exercise to help you identify, all right, where do we see the opportunity here? Where is the gap? What could that be? And plus it's a little fun and it's something that you can do to kind of spark a different part of your brain. Um, but that's one of the techniques that we'll often use to help people think differently about their audiences. And the most fun is when you have someone who then puts their person on there and they've got, you know, like half a hat on one thing and a baseball cap half on the other. You know, it's, it's just a really great way to help tell that story. Um, and then to hold on to those um, and to use that with your recruitment committees or your membership committees actually give them a scan of those photos of those images and then that can become what they hold on to as part of their criteria in moving that forward um, and i think you know there's also that concern about losing members and not having the ability to, to have those conversations um, and that when you end up listening to just one person something that can actually happen in a room or via zoom um, and that is the opportunity use breakouts. I cannot encourage you enough to use breakouts where you might normally be in one large setting, then throw everyone into breakouts randomly and then mix people up. Um, and there are also some techniques that you can use. There's a platform that I was introduced recently um, called Meet Away, and it is an online networking platform that automatically rotates people who have signed up into these, for the one I was in, it was a 10 minute cycle. And then you just end up in a room with someone new and you just start talking to each other. 
And usually a couple of minutes are the hilarity of trying to figure out the technology because it never works exactly as smoothly as you want it to. But it's a great way to spark some new conversations in a really low impact way. Because I am not a fan of networking events. I, they, it's a lot of talking with a lot of people and it can be a little overwhelming. Um, but in that event, it was actually fun because I didn't have to worry about, do I walk up to that next circle of people and have to interrupt their conversation or like, what is the environment in the room? I was just forced into the next conversation with the next person in line. Um, and so using some of those emerging technologies can be a great way to have those personal connections, um, even in this really virtual world. And so I want to, um, again, thank you. I know you have an entire evening ahead. Um, and so really appreciate the opportunity to come and hopefully spark a few thoughts and ideas um, and continue your wonderful work in improving the communities throughout the state and building those connections that are so vital um, in times today. So thank you for that. And I will turn it back over to, to Ben, I believe, to yeah. move you into the next segment. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Melanie. Virtual round of applause for Melanie, please. Uh, that was great. I love the idea. I'm, I'm in marketing. I love the idea of using personas to identify potential new members, who they are, what they need, what they want. Um, love that. Um, you know, we, we um, are so happy to have Melanie here and um, to have her give this presentation. It's really timely. A top priority for Rotary is growing and diversifying our membership uh, to make sure that we reflect the communities that we uh, live in and serve. Uh, and it's time to deliver on that priority. Uh, we all are really trying to create an organization that's more open and inclusive, fair to all, you know, it's in our four-way test, builds goodwill, uh, all of that. And um, I think that this, this message is just um, perfect timing uh, because uh, as Rotarians, that's, that's our cause and, any time is perfect timing when it comes to inclusivity and um, will it be beneficial to all concerned. So uh, thanks again, Melanie, uh, for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, in appreciation for uh, Melanie's time tonight, um, if you're not aware, World Polio Day is October 24th. So the district is gonna be making a contribution to Polio Plus uh, in honor of Melanie's time tonight and to help um, strengthen that final push towards uh, eradicating polio from the world. So thanks again, Melanie.